Morning, morning, and welcome back to Northern Roast Mustard. And today you join me on race week of roast, ro uh, Rome Marathon even, roast marathon. Um, it should be roasting hopefully, which will be nice for a bit of uh, sun in the middle of March in the UK. Anyway, so yeah, this is race week for Rome Marathon. So um, I'm gonna do a bit of filming from today, which is Wednesday the 13th of March, 2024. And my race is in Rome on Sunday, the 17th, so a couple of days, and hopefully you'll follow me uh, in my first marathon race week, um, and it should be, hopefully, a bit of fun, and semi-interesting, hopefully, so, anyway, um, so it's eight o'clock in the morning now, well, quarter to eight, off to work for the second to last day before I, I fly out to Rome, um, and yeah, um, I'm gonna talk to you all about how my preparation's gone for my first marathon, how I'm feeling, um, any issues, I'll talk about my race kit and obviously you'll get to see um, hopefully uh, my running room if I can carry this camera with me and still get the time I'm after. So uh, without further ado, let's get on with my day. So what about Rome Marathon? Well, I actually bought this last January, so way before I'd even done, uh, I think I'd only done one half marathon then, and I wasn't really into my running, maybe doing two runs a week, 5Ks, um, probably running about 23, 24 minute 5Ks, my 10K might have been about 45 minutes or so, and I just thought I'd do it to do something that would sort of push me a little bit, because I hadn't really done any sort of long distance running before that other than a half marathon. So booked it quite a while ago. Since then, I've undergone a weight loss transformation down from 19 stone down to, I think it was about 13. So I went down from 119 kilos down to 79. Uh, so, uh, or something like that, about 31 kilos I lost it all in all. And then I also did a 24 hour um, ultra marathon race. So it was around a five mile loop. It's called Endure 24, it's a, it's a trail race essentially and it's how many five mile loops you can do in 24 hours now it is quite um difficult terrain there's hills there's sand there's road there's farmers fields there's um track there's everything in the technical sections with really rooty trees uh, and i managed 100 100 miles actually uh, without actually training for it i'd only ever done three half marathons before that a couple of race 10ks and my training again was just two days a week, five to 10 Ks, nothing fast, just your usual zone two stuff. So I was super proud of that. Um, and this is my next big challenge. Last year I did quite a bit of racing, five Ks, 10 Ks and half marathons, but nothing bigger than that, uh, other than the ultra marathon, I should say. So this is my second biggest distance I will ever do so far in my life. And then I do, I have booked another 24 hour race uh, for two months time, but let's not talk about that now. So let's get off to work. We're going to be late. I've been speaking for too long already and we are going to be running late, so catch you in a bit. Hiya, please can I have a skinny blonde flat white with sugar free vanilla, please? Blonde flat white with sugar free vanilla? Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. It's everything. Yeah, it's everything, thank you. Keep you around, thank you. Cheers. Can't go to work without a uh, blonde, skinny blonde sugar free vanilla flat white, whatever I've ordered. By the way, don't at me for my. Uh, drinks order i know it's similar to what probably a 13 year old would drink but if you ever you know after a decent tasting coffee a skinny blonde flat white with sugar free vanilla from starbucks you can't go too far wrong and it's low in calorie you heard it here first you do sound like a bit of a melt though ordering it but anyway right so you join me after work work has been done and we're just gonna get some supplies now for the marathon. I've come to the Nike outlet because whenever it gets close to marathon time of year, um, if you go to one of these outlets, often people are returning um, alpha flies or vapor flies or something of that descript, so you can pick them up for cheap. So I've got alpha flies for 90 quid before and uh, vapor flies for 70. So let's nip into the Nike outlet and see what we can uh, find. So 
Nike was a bust. Um, unfortunately, this can happen quite a bit. You just got to keep going in. Like I said, when it gets towards marathon season, people go on the Nike uh, website. They'll buy a pair of Alpha Flies, Vapor Flies, any sort of super shoe. They might buy two pairs. They might just buy one. It might not fit. And you end up just returning to a local out, outlet like this one. And you can pick up, like I said, Alpha Flies. I got a Next% percent twos for £90. And I got the Vapor Fly 2% as well uh, for 60 quid. Uh, so really worth going in and checking those 50% off rails. Anyway, I did dip into booths. I managed to pick up a few bits um, for the marathon, some paracetamol, hairspray. Um, what I was looking for was some um, Imodium, just because honestly, when it comes to race day, I, uh, yeah, it's not good. And that's what I'm after really, because the last thing I want to do is get caught short in a marathon. So I'm going to head back home now anyway. I'll see you back at home and uh, catch up with you in a bit. So I was just about to promise you my uh, actual kit I was going to be wearing to the marathon, but I completely forgot that I actually had a, a bike session to do. So I've got one bike session to do tonight, which is on Zwift. Uh, I think about an hour and 12. And then tomorrow I've got a fartlek uh, session to do, which I think is about 45 minutes. And then on the Friday, obviously, I'm traveling to Rome and I've got a couple of days in Rome uh, before the marathon on Sunday. So I was going to show you my kit, but I've actually got a bike session to do. So you join me in my... Well, I suppose you'd call it my garage. Well, I was going to call it a pain cave, but as you can tell, it's just, just literally a garage. We've got a Christmas tree there. For those who follow me on Instagram will already have seen this set up. My um, Christmas tree there, Christmas tree box with a few bits on, with an old hoover, just to add a bit of decoration. And then um, this is my basically my Zwift setup. So you've got my bike here, my Halford Spech with a Fink Vic <laughs> sort of sweat guard. Uh, but this is the Pièce de Résistance. And it is my uh, music stand that I um, that I basically deal with all my stuff from. So I have my Zwift set up here. My old Samsung flip phone is my uh, thing, sort of music. And I've got all my bits there. But I'll just sit on here and then I can just uh, do my bits. So better crack on with this because the time is now, as you can see, 9 o'clock. I've got an hour and 10 to do. Then I need to start packing. Then tomorrow I've got to do this fartlek training. And then I've got to finalise all my packing and get my bits and bobs ready for Friday morning for six o'clock uh, flight. So it's exciting. Yeah, let's get going. Absolutely too good to be true. Zwift isn't pulling my session through. Oh. Plan B. Meant to, I've got a set session basically by my running, my running coach or my coach doesn't just do my running, does my biking too. Not pulled through. We're now at 20 past nine at night. It's like a recovery sort of session. So I'm just gonna go into Wattopia and just, just do something. I don't know. Live it up, I suppose. You know what I mean? Give it a bit of Lance Armstrong's. So to be honest, this just sums up my day really. I've actually had an all right day, but you know, get home late and then you have your tea late and then by the time you sort stuff out. So here we are just complaining, being a miserable sod. But gives me a chance to tackle some people on Watopia, dish out some ride-ons and uh, see how it goes. Right, so we are now on Thursday, 14th of March, three days away from the Rome Marathon. So the last time you saw me, <clears throat> I was outside on my Zwift, final day away before logging off. And now here's my kit. I've laid my kit out for race day out in here. So you'll see what I'm taking on my persons on the, the race day. Before I do, as you can see, Len's got a cone of shame on, haven't you? Hey, got a bit of an injury to his, uh, I don't know if you can see it actually, on his side of his body. Yeah, there's a nasty little pot. So we've got the, the cone of shame, haven't you? Hey, good boy. Anyway, so here you can see my what I'm going to be wearing for Rome. That's better with the light on. So, cap, Vega cap, nice and light, plenty breathable, delish. I won't be wearing any sunnies because I'm not that keen. Next, I've got these um, Terex agave shorts. I haven't actually worn these, so I will be taking a spare pair of. Um, you right there, Len? A spare pair of cycling shorts that I'll be wearing uh, if I don't like these on the on the day. I've got some arm sort of sleeves just in case fancy wearing them. Nippies so I don't get any chafing. 
I've got some salts because I'm a particularly salty runner and it's going to be about 20 degrees I believe so probably be trying to have a couple of them some bib clips now these are class if you haven't got a set of these make sure you do just so much better than having to mess about with pins nice and easy dead easy you can clip them to my vest so it's a fresh vest for Rome I've got my torque gels I've got a mixture of flavors I'll probably I won't be taking all these so I've got the raspberry ripple the black cherry yogurt so yeah they're gonna be my gels so I'm gonna take five of them and then for what I'm gonna have on my feet I've got some pure sport socks I tend to go with the shoe socks but the ones I've got that match this pair this sort of vault mint color I've got um mud spots and that much you can't get out in the wash and then some alpha fly two percent uh they've done about 30 kilometers in these so done a half a marathon and a 5k so about 30 kilometers so yeah that's my race kit for the road marathon subject to changing these out for some cycling shorts so yeah excited um do have some other bits you know vaseline maybe some tiger balm maybe some chafing i don't know something like that but that there is a kit that's going to be on my persons for race day so all that's left to do now is pack um, we are now at half eight um i'm uh, getting picked up at 3 a.m so we're at half eight now need to pack i've got a 40 minute run to do i've got a shave i've got a yeah pack up all my bits so i've got a lot to do for the rest of the night so i'm gonna be busy once learning stops kicking off I'll be ready to, to go. So hopefully next time you see me, we'll be on the way to Rome and it'll be two days until the marathon. So let's do this. It is now three in the morning. Bags are packed, ready to go. Got my rucksack. Um, so yeah, just wait for my dad to come pick me up now. And then uh, off to Manchester Airport. Class, see you there. Here we are, let's get going. Yes, so we're now here. We've just been in the lounge, just getting a little bit of food, a bit of a coffee, just getting ready for the flight. It's 20 past five, so yeah, we'll see how we get see how we get on and get ready to board. So we just landed in Rome, just got off the plane, just feeling mega tired, it's been a, an hour of sleep last night and then probably about 40 minutes on the plane then, knees cramped up, but uh, got a bit of married at first sight and so there we go, so just we get into the terminal now and then uh, get our bags and be on our way into Rome. So we just uh, arrived at the hotel. Uh, the NH collection Palazzo Cinquecento. Um, fortunately, the room wasn't ready, but I managed to get changed in a toilet. Although the sun is sort of kind of out, it is still warm. So, yeah, just going to go off to the Marathon Village now, film some of the sights along the way, and uh, we'll see what we can see what we can find. So as you can see, I've arrived at the uh, place where I come to collect the race stuff, the bib and whatnot, a couple of other things, I think t-shirt and a bag. Decided to come on the Friday because it's actually meant to be a little bit quieter than tomorrow if the, the advice is to come. So you can see it's nice and quiet, so we should be able to collect the bib quite easily. Fortunately though, it is a bit far out from Rome, so it's about a 30 minute cab drive, so about 24 euros, about a 45 minute metro and then walk. Bit annoying, because uh, I was starting to walk towards the centre, but it's nowhere near the centre, it's completely out of centre. So. Let's go and pick up the bib and bits and bobs, see what's inside. The bib number collected, 703. I'm in the, unfortunately I'm in the white section, which is not sound uh, because that is the slowest one. I'm aiming for a sub three or around three hours. 
not happy about that, so I might just try and sneak into one of the uh, the faster waves, maybe. Let's see how we do. Um, but yeah, so finally got it, finally here, I'm ready to to go. So we've just been to grab uh, the race stuff. We've got a t-shirt. Uh, so I'll show you a little bit more of that in a second. And we've also got, so there's a t-shirt. So we've got a t-shirt, free, free with the race. We've got a bag with, a, I don't know what that is. I'm assuming you can put your name and number in there. And then loads of goodies inside. Um, I don't know what's in there. Blisters, we've got protein drinks we've got all sorts of stuff in all sorts of good stuff in there so so yeah not bad considering it was i think 39 euros to to enter or 41 euro, 49 euros so trust a bit to that so i'm gonna go and spoil the rest of the expo now see how we get on so yeah i'll show you that when i get back to the hotel but considering it's you know 40 quid when you get an early bird ticket you get a t-shirt which is decent and it's fitted and it's not bad quality. You get a rucksack and you get loads of goodies inside as well. So I think that's not bad considering, you know, you'll pay 20 quid for a local half marathon. Just a bit with that. Yeah, so here we go. I'm just gonna spoil the rest of the expo now. There's plenty of little shops and stuff. Probably not buy anything. As you, as you well know, you shouldn't be wearing anything new or trying anything new for marathon day. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. So I think this is the official sponsor um, stand. I'm well, trying to plug um, some Joe uh, trainers, which look interesting. I think I'll probably stick to the Alpha Flies, um, as you can imagine. Yeah, this is a pretty cool, cool place actually. And because we've come on the Friday, not a Saturday, you can at least walk around. It's quiet enough to have a wander around and chill out and pick up your bits. So we're going to sign my name. I'll probably go go with George Was with a Z here 2K24 Put a little love art as well. There you go, George Was here. <laughs> Blackpool. <laughs> Massive. There you go, George Was here. 20, 2024 Blackpool Massive. There you go. Funny enough, there is some other things I've spotted. There's a Ancoats Run Club there, local to me. One last thing before we go is the sort of name wall that you get at most marathons, I think. But I can't seem to find my name as of yet. We'll look for, right, last name, last name first. Let's have a look. Let's see what we can find. Ooh, where are we? And we found it. Where I've lost it now. Where is it? Where are we? I've lost it already. Ah, oh, there we go. Jordan Withers, right next to the bogs. Plus. So yeah. <laughs> there we go. Rome Marathon 2024. So we're gonna head back into Rome now and and have some some food and have a little wander around and see the sights. So catch you there. Morning, morning. So, you find me now. 
Just after, can you see? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, after sort of having a wander around yesterday, probably walked a little bit too much, but when in Rome, you have to uh, you have to do these things. You have to go and check out these places. After that, I just came back to the hotel, had a little a little nap, and then went out for some food. I had a pizza because tonight I'm gonna have a onion pasta. And uh, yeah, managed to get nine and a half hours sleep, which was 100% recovery on my Garmin, which for me is really unusual. I've got a new, I've got a newborn baby that's six weeks old now, so I was born during this marathon training block. And yeah, nine hours sleep is quite a foreign concept to me. So anyway, that's by the by. So we're gonna go down for breakfast now. Have have some breakfast, something a little bit light, and then I'm gonna go for my shakeout run. Ordinarily, I'd probably do my shakeout run before the breakfast, but given that um, I just really want to get my sleep in today, yeah, I'm gonna go and have some. Uh... We're at nine o'clock now. Box a brekkie off, and then go for a, a, a shakeout run. And I'll bring you on with my shakeout run, and we'll talk about how my training's gone for this block, but also issues I've encountered with this with this training block too. So. All right, well, I'll see you soon. Breakfast done. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing wrong with it. Been waiting all mine to set on. Got any muffin? Right, so join me on the 20 minute shakeout run for the marathon tomorrow. Super busy. Um, I think half the battle for this run is not to be killed. To be honest, keep looking the wrong way down the road as well, which is bad. So yeah, let's discuss how training's going. It's been a 10 week training block. Well, it's been good. The mileage has gone up consistently. I've got a really good coach in peak performance. So it's gone up consistently. And I felt great. I think my longest long run, I did two fast 10Ks to start, about 41 minutes each, then the rest aerobic. And I think that would have ended me with a time of three hours 15 marathon. So I know tomorrow, if I just do a fast 10K, five minutes off, another fast 10K, and then just jog the rest, I know, I can manage a 315 marathon. Now, that was three weeks ago now, maybe four weeks ago. And since then, I've actually uh, had a bit of runner's knee, which has been an absolute pain. I've not been able to train at all for, or properly for the last two weeks or so. It's been a bit of a nightmare which means my mileage has gone from sort of, whatever it was, 60, 60, 70, 80 kilometers a week to about 20. I've still been able to do a bit of bike, but still it's been, it's not been great. So that's the last two weeks I've been struggling with my left knee, runner's knee, which has been really hot, really painful to walk up and down stairs. That's been my runner's knee. I've been trying everything, massages, I've been trying uh, stretching, I've been trying everything, but I think to be honest, just doing all that and resting was just aggravating it more by just doing loads of stuff to it. So not great, but anyway. So yeah, not great, but anyway. So before that, we had my daughter, Xanthi, was born five weeks ago, six now actually you know, halfway through my marathon training block, I had a newborn, so sleep's not been amazing. But you know, it's whatever. You can manage on little sleep. And then during that time, I also had what I thought was COVID, but it turned out to be a chest infection that I had for three weeks, which required antibiotics. So 
<laughs> it's not been the most, you know, simple of marathon blocks. And given this is my first marathon training, a bit frustrating. But I can't really complain too much about it today because I've got the miles in. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Really frustratingly, I booked, I booked Rome what? 11 months ago. You have this in your, 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 your mind on how it's going to go. And two weeks out, you get what I presume is runner's knee. Just feeling like agitated and just hot and inflamed all the time. And they, so it's just frustrating because, you know, on one day out, I can feel my knee. But saying that, I'm sure when the race comes along tomorrow, the adrenaline will kick in. I won't feel it. So let's talk about what I'd hoped for this race. Given what I've just told you about injuries and prep. Morning. Um, got an amazing coach, so you know I feel really confident in that respect. My plan before the sort of injuries and stuff was always to run sub three to three hour marathon, which I think is still doable. My fastest half marathon time from October last year was 126 something. That was when I was only running three times a week and running wasn't my, it was still my main focus, but I wasn't putting the time in. So now I'm doing six days a week running ish that I think that 126 will be a little bit slower. I reckon maybe 124, 125. So sub three was always on the cars now. Just so how everything's going. I would say that's in jeopardy quite a bit. I'd probably be happy with, thank you. I'd probably be happy with 305, 310. Being as though it's my first marathon, you know, I have done 100 miles, you know, trail runs, but given it's my first road marathon where I'm going for speed, I think I'd be happy with somewhere around three. And even if not, my first marathon, I'm only 32, despite my luck, so it's been a hard life. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, there's plenty of time for other marathons and if I feel like I've not done myself justice this time then maybe Chester in October so we'll see how it goes just been bit by a dog just been bit I've actually just been bit on the leg by a dog it's a good I don't really know what to say about that other than I literally just stopped recording he didn't manage to break my skin but an Alsatian you would have uh, heard some freaky language then. That's not good, I need to check my leg in a minute. Race day tomorrow. They've put me in the slowest, go down there, don't know where it goes, but they've put me in the slowest bracket, which is very frustrating because it means I'm running with runners that are aiming for 3.40 to six hours and 30. I have no issues with running with people that are aiming for slower times but of course what that means for me is there's no paces that I can run with and there's also going to be no groups that I can run with that are going to be running at a similar pace to me. The Trevi Fountain now as you can see it's getting way busier. This is what the marathon is going to be like tomorrow with all these people you can guarantee it. Um, the roads are obviously all closed of course. Starts and ends at the Coliseum so it's going to be sick. This is mental. It's like dodge, it's like Mario Kart. Excuse me, thank you. Has anyone ever done a busier shake out run? <laughs> this is mental. That's all the uh, chatting I'm going to do today on this run. I told you that was the last you see me on this run, but somehow, well, I say somehow, I organised it this way. Probably need to finish my run now because it's 20 minutes but I'm on the finish straight and the start straight of the road marathon. Of course you can see all the toilets along here but you can also see the Coliseum just in the distance there so that's where we'll be starting so pretty sick to be fair it's pretty hot sweating I'm only doing an average of 622 kilometer so yeah, here we are. I'll be running up here tomorrow on these cobble streets to the finish. Hopefully victorious. Or I could be limping across with a uh, horrendous uh, cramp and knee issues. <laughs> Let's hope it's not a latter. 
places when you're running, why do you get to run towards the course here behind the bus? You know what I mean? Look at that ruining my shot. Ruining my shot. Look at that, I can't. Sort of, sort of stuff you uh, watch this video for, this quality content, back of a bus. But you know what I mean, look at that. Running. Oh, mega. That's better than London, isn't it? That's better than Berlin. That's better than whatever, isn't it? Surely. Right, I'll leave you with a shot of the uh, Coliseum. That is me. Right. Morning, morning, morning. So, day of the marathon. We are at, I think about half five, just had a quick shower. Slapped on my nippies. So I've got a little uh, plastered over my nipples now. I won't show you to keep it PG. Um, current stitch, I'm making uh, non-toasted bagels. That's a bit dead, isn't it? That's a bit annoying. I always like toasted. Race gears out. Just ready to get everything together. Got some anti-chafe, which I don't know if I'm gonna use. I don't really chafe, but uh, all my gels, some Vaseline for my eyebrows. It's gonna be 20 degrees today. So any sun cream I wanna keep out of my eyes. It's also useful for a scrap. If you're having a scrap and you've got Vaseline on your eyebrows. I won't, don't worry, I won't be scrapping. And yeah, just getting ready now. I'm pretty nervous. Um, try to go to the toilet, which I know is more detail than you need, but it's just not happening. No movement. Um, a little bit like the train service in the UK, really. Um, just going to drop down these bagels and then I'm going to sip some electrolytes. Yeah, I'll catch you in a bit. Right, so here we are. Got the peak performance vest on. Ready to go, just going to stick my cap on and then head down to the race. So. Yeah, let's do this. So we're at the spring right, right, start line now. We're going to see, we're gonna be heading into the uh, <laughs> Sort of waiting area soon. Uh, just trying to work out where to go. Yeah, for that. Mega. I'm just at the start. Well, just go back to going to the pen. It's lovely and sunny. It's nine degrees. I'm not done my warm up yet. Go. Just show you the, the view behind. Look at that. Through the columns. You can just see the coliseum right in the distance where my finger is. And uh, yeah ready to go so feeling all right a bit nervous just need to go to the loo and then uh yeah uh, i'm not going to take this out on the run with me today just because i've got saddled up with with gel so i won't be taking it on my run so unfortunately you're gonna have to wait until after the race for my my uh, result but um yeah sure it'll go okay so catch on the flip side so i finished the uh road marathon with official time of three hours and 28 minutes something Bit of a tough race that really. Uh, just kept cramping up from halfway basically. So every every two k, I was having to pull over, stretch my stretch, stretch my leg out. As you can see by how salty I am, I probably just wasn't taking on enough salt. I had gels at every correct point, maybe slightly early, just because I was feeling it. I had a couple of salt tabs, but it just got so hot so quickly and so humid. I just didn't. Uh, wasn't my day today, unfortunately. So I'm a bit disappointed. Very gutted, to be honest with you. But you know, I was aiming for somewhere between sub three if it went well, somewhere between three and three ten if it went badly. You know, I did three fifteen in training, pretty much. Yeah. 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 So, just at the airport now, Champino Airport, having my last little uh, Italian coffee. And then, yeah, that's what you thank you. Um, so, that is the Rome experience over. Next time you see me, I'll be back at home and I'll do my sort of race rundown. 
uh, had a lot of time to think about it. So, um, so yeah, see you at home and we'll discuss what happened on their race day. So we are back, back in the Ribble Valley, back in England. And actually the sun's shining for the first time in a while. So I arrived back on Tuesday night, we are now on the Sunday, so literally a week today I finished the, the road marathon. This is now my race report, so you've waited to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching if you got to this point or even skipped to this bit. So the race report, well, what I will say is the road marathon is a good marathon. It's a good marathon to do. I wouldn't recommend it for your first marathon for some of the reasons I mentioned before, that if you haven't done one before, you will just be put in the slowest category. So if you are someone aiming for a particular time, something above three hours 45, then it might not be the marathon for you. Uh, particularly if you come from a cold climate, for example, and it's one of the earlier marathons of the year, and it's still quite warm, which I'll get onto in a moment it might not be the best marathon for you from that perspective. There is cobbles, uh, it's quite narrow in places, it's certainly busy and feels like a marathon that's grown from something that's a lot smaller and potentially the facilities aren't quite there for it personally, particularly with some of the road works that are going on with, with Rome at the moment given they're going to be putting in a new metro line. But anyway, Let's talk about my race. So I'm going to pull up some of my race stats. So the plan, as you remember from my shakeout run, was to, I wanted to run sub three, but probably wasn't the best sort of prep as I've, I've, I think I mentioned earlier on. The plan was, if it wasn't going to be sub three, to be somewhere around 3.05 or 3.10. That was what I sort of agreed with my running coach. Again, peak performance, you saw my, with my vest on. Brilliant running coach, um, set me up for success really well now the plan was to go out relatively easily and not go out too uh, too quickly and then slowly build into the race and try and negative split from there on so the first sort of 10k to potentially half was to you know slow first 10k just settle in see how you go then move into the sort of halfway point and start trying to kick on a negative split and then see where where we come out first 5k 22.19 so you know not too bad my fastest 5k is about 18 something but you know quite an easy pace for me that so it's not too bad next 44.33 so that was my 10k split so again i can go sub 40 38 a nice pace 15k uh, one hour six perfect and then the half 133 so that was about where i wanted to be actually and i was feeling okay at that point of the race. So after halfway, the 25K split, we go back to four, four minutes 28 pace and we're at one hour 51. And this is where you can see the big drop off now. We go down to the 30K split, 4.32 pace, 35K split, 4.40 pace, 4, 4K split, 4.52 pace, and the, the finish, the last um, 2K split was 4.57, because I basically cramped up on the line as you can see i was doing a lot of stopping walking jogging stop jog walk um just because i just kept cramping and i just couldn't get rid of it and it was tough i would never dnf any of these races i would never do that unless obviously i physically couldn't continue with the race uh, for whatever reason medical reason or whatever but at 25k it did cross my mind it's like i could might not be able to finish this that's how i genuinely felt I didn't have my phone or any money and I thought, well, if I'm going to DNF, I'd have to walk back anyway. But, you know, it was never on the cards for me to DNF. But, I mean, at a certain point, I'm thinking, geez, like, if I'm going to have to run 17K cramping every half a kilometre to a kilometre, I'm going to be in absolute pieces by the end. And I was. I was in absolute pieces. I couldn't, I couldn't walk up and down stairs for the rest of the, the holiday. But yeah, that's where that's where my race was won and lost, unfortunately, that cramp. But it was killing me and I was going backwards. There was people in fancy dress coming past me. And yeah, it was a tough, tough place to be mentally. But anyway, let's talk about the organisation of the Rome Marathon. So I believe this is a marathon that has grown quite exponentially. I think in the end there was, let me have a look, 18,000, just over 18,000 completed the, the Rome Marathon. Do I think it's a marathon that can cope with 18,000 people? The answer is I'd probably say no, not at the moment. Not with the amount of works that are going on for the new Metro link there. There wasn't enough 
toilets, which I don't think there ever is, but you know, people are just going anywhere and everywhere they can, which fair enough. No warm up places. I think the organization was okay, you know, when they were trying to get the waves together, but there's clearly just too many people in the final wave. So as I said, I think it was orange, green, blue, and it's going from fastest to slowest. And then the final wave was a white wave. Now the white wave seemed to have pretty much double whatever it was in all the other waves put together. So you just had this situation, everyone was going in all the different sort of corridors that sort of had gates on them where you could go through. All they were just going through, all the other gates and the white gate was just queued back all the way along. And um, yeah, just not ideal. A lot of people in one place, it was getting hot. People getting um, a bit stressed, a bit annoyed. Someone had to go at me. It's like amazing place to do it. Amazing place to do it. You get to run through so much history. Vatican, Piazza Navonia, past the Colosseum, past the Circus Maximus, all these sorts of things. But it is fraught with heat, cobbles, uh, narrow streets. Yeah, undulating streets as well you know the cobbles aren't just like you know nice cobbles the, the worst in coronation street so something to consider if you are thinking about doing the road marathon so what's next for northernmost muscle than me well i've got plenty of 10ks 5ks we've got high rocks there's plenty more events that i'll be booking over the course of the year and hopefully you can follow my journey i'll also do some trail uh, some running shoe reviews and trail running re shoe reviews plenty of shoe reviews I have zero expertise in shoes, I just like buying them. And of course, track my sort of running progress. And um, thank you so much for watching this video. It might be a bit of a mess just because it's my first video back. It's a new camera I'm trying out. I'm sorry I couldn't film the race. It was just one of them where I thought if I had, I was saddled up with uh, salt tabs, gels. I just didn't want to carry it as well, particularly as I thought it was going to be one of my uh, finer moments and better races. And to be honest, if I had filmed it, it would just been me whinging even more than I have done this video, sort of limping across the line. So anyway, it is what it is. So that's me. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Please get in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I'll see you soon. And uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. You've got at jwiv23 and you've also got my running meme page, which is runjwiv as well. So please go and give them a follow. Say hello in the comments and I'll speak to you soon.